not super well known, but has some famous stories in it, like the fall of Jericho. Starts like this. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, Moses, my servant is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, into the land that I am giving to them, to the people of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given to you, just as I promised to Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites to the great sea, toward the going down of the sun, shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life, just as I was with Moses. So I will be with you. I will not leave you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous, for you shall cause this people to inherit the land that I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, being careful to do according to all the law that Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may have good success wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous. And then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened, and do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. The book of Joshua is very interesting because it's the continued story of the nation of Israel, the nation God called into existence to bless the whole world through the promotion of his name, through the subsequent removal of idols. Sometimes the book of Joshua is misunderstood. Because it can look like God favors his people over the other people because of what the Bible does and doesn't explain. When we do a little research, we find out that the Canaanites regularly were sacrificing their children. And all sorts of other abuses were allowed against the poor. People were marginalized and assaulted. If you read back in the book of Genesis, it describes some of their ways. With just a little bit of imagination we can understand why God wanted the Canaanites either in worship to him and him alone or gone. And that's the thing too. If you're familiar with the scriptures, you know that when something's prophesied, that doesn't mean that's the only way the story can go. Like in the book of Jonah, when he encourages them to repent and they do. And then the Ninevites are not destroyed. Similarly, The people behind the walls of Jericho had seven days. There were opportunities to repent. They knew what God had done to Egypt, and they chose to reject him. There are a number of other lovely parts of the book of Joshua. In chapter 2, when they're preparing to go to Jericho, a woman named Rahab, who's known as promiscuous, lets the Israelites stay with her and plan because she knew of the reputation of God from Egypt. Not only is that an interesting story, but she's in the lineage of Jesus, which gives us a reminder that God's love is for everyone. God turns away no one. The story goes back and forth, much like the Exodus narrative itself on the way to Canaan. The people turn away from God and then they return to him. And yet he is always good, and he continues in covenant with them. And he continues to love and guide them back to the ways of the with God life. Joshua chapter 1 verse 9 again says this, Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Which is such a lovely reminder, not that we shouldn't have fear, But we have the Lord who strengthens us, gives us courage, removes our fear, and is with us wherever we go. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Reminding us of the gospel. That God loves us. That he's with us wherever we go because of Jesus who not only atoned for our sin, but strengthens us and gives us courage for this life. That's it for five more minutes. Have a good week.